Hello everybody and welcome to CDH Television with a card review of Slugurk, the Overslime. Oh, the name, right? It's a free mana cost Simic, green, blue, generic, legendary creature Ooze, Trample 3-3. Three, three. And whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one, plus one counter on this thing. And you have an activated ability, remove three plus one plus one counters from Slugurk, Return it to its owner's hand. When Slugurk leaves the battlefield, return up to three target land cards from your graveyard back to your hand. So it's basically a land Simic Grave Commander. Now at first glance it looks a little bit meh, right? But his ability is actually a form of card drawing ability. So here we have, for example, Lonely Sandbar, which is a terrible land because it comes into play tapped and it taps for blue mana, so a basic island is way better. However, for one blue mana, you can put it into your graveyard and you can draw a card. So it's one blue mana instant speed draw a card. That's also pretty bad considering opt are better. However, it will fuel this commander and you can basically regain it. So yeah, there is a form of a card drawing functionality here. But it will also be passively fueled by something like a fetch land as well. We also have... Ursa's Saga, that is a land that goes to the graveyard by itself, Bastara Baghdad, tap it, draw two cards, discard three cards. If you discard land cards, you're gonna get plus one scan counters on your commander, so you can return into your hand and regain a few lands. And you also have Strip Mine, and Strip Mine is a, I don't want to say it's a win con, but it's something to kind of disrupt and try to hurt and destroy your opponents at a tiny bit, as you can regain Strip Mine over and over. So what you're basically looking for is a great start where you can have some extra land drop effects into play as fast as potentially turn one. Imagine having exploration into play turn one, getting a second land drop, passing turn, your turn two you cast your commander and you put a fetch land into play and it's suddenly a 4-4. And on your third turn you get to activate him. Your third turn you could basically be a fetch land, a strip mine, you strip mine someone, you return this, you regain strip mine and you're ready to just sit there and do evil shenanigans. And that takes us to how good is this commander actually? And in truth, it's not that great because the the turn that I just described to you isn't busted compared to winning or compared to doing something crazier that other decks are currently doing. But it's not bad either. You're playing a Simic deck and in Simic you usually have access to a lot of counter spells. Which means that you could basically interact with the crazy stuff your opponents are doing and then sit there with a very consistent, very easy card drawing commander somewhat. Try to interact, grind value, get stronger, increase your mana production by putting a lot of lands into play and just looping lands for more value over and over as you're sitting there and interacting with whatever your opponents are up to. And you also have a one card combo, really expensive, in this deck in form of Walk the Aeons. Six mana, target player takes an extra turn, but with buyback, sacrifice free islands, you get it back to your hand as an additional cost as it's resolving, which means you can cast it again. But when those lands go to your graveyard, you're gonna get free plus one plus one counters on your commander, and you can activate your commander to return it to your hand and return those three islands back to your hand as well. This is actually really slow and I'm not super sold on this combo because if you compare it to how fast other people are trying to win, it's currently 9 mana. First you need to pay 6 mana over there, then you need to pay 3 mana over there to recast your commander so that you can do it again next turn. But you also need to have 2 additional land drops, however you're probably gonna try to cast this when you have a really high land count and you could sit there and just sacrifice lands over and over, never going infinite, but if you're taking like five extra turns, you're gonna draw into those extra land drops and probably get there. So it is a little bit of a give and take. You can probably go off when you have one extra land drop. Two is where you truly go infinite, but you should be able to get there by just having one. Still though, 9 mana is a lot, and that's gonna make it very hard to protect yourself in a counterspell war, because people are going to counterspell this. By the way, that is also target, so people are going to deflecting swat this as well. How I really think this is going to be played and executed is that you're gonna sit back, try to grind value like I talked before, get those land drops, get those card draw, recast this 
a bunch and interact with various counter spells from your Kadra, maybe a few stacks pieces here and there, and then try to grind your way towards this. Kadra with this deck shouldn't be a problem. You, you have a few tutors that can actually find this, and you might have some other things to going forward. So it, it sounds like a really grindy game plan, and honestly, in Simic, that could actually really work. I really think that Sapphire Medallion... I've been doing some retakes over. This one was really hard to pronounce for some reason. Sapphire Medallion is a really good card for this deck, as you're probably looking into recasting your commander over and over. Instead of paying 3 mana, you're paying 2 mana, so this should really help out a bunch. Also, this is going to make the Walk of Aeons a lot cheaper as well. So instead of paying 9 mana for the total combo, you're paying 7 mana, so that's a lot of help from this one card artifact. In all honesty, I really think that this could be a really fun commander in general. It has a lot of really cool things, a unique game style to it that seems really appealing, so I definitely think a lot of people are actually gonna try this one out, and there is a combo going for it, so it's definitely CDH viable, if your commander has card draw, if your commander has a combo going for it, a natural pathway towards a, a decent combo, and one card combos are definitely always decent combos, then yeah, that is CDH viable. However, there is one really important thing I would like to mention about this, is that this commander's ability is kinda unique, this commander's playstyle is really unique, and that makes it really hard to actually estimate how good and functional it's going to be because you really need to play test it you really need to see it in action a few games until you really understand its potential flow how good it is at producing its kind of game plan and how good it is at drawing into those interactions i think this deck is gonna be in demand of a high amount of counter spells and interaction to really combat the current metagame as i've like i i don't want to sit here and say that the combo is ultimately really slow i just predict it's going to be slow playtesting will really showcase how potentially fast this combo could be another thing i really want to talk about is the plan b or maybe not plan b i think this deck is gonna have a lot of different plan b's but let's go with the i don't know where it's gonna end up in the plan priority order but this is definitely voltron 2 i think this commander could get very huge really fast I, I honestly think that how this deck is going to be played, once people have started to figure out a good flow, figure out a good build for it, I really predict that this could get huge really fast. If you just cast that mill spell that puts like a random bunch of cards into your graveyard and you get one of those into your hand, like fact or fiction, like imagine this in fact and fiction. You get a few cards into your hand and a few lands into your graveyard, you get card draw, and this gets fueled at the same time. Eventually, this is getting huge, and it got trampled. This could really go to commander damage. I really think it could kill, like, if the game gets really long and really complicated, this could really start to punch people. Now, I don't know about you, but I've actually been killed by Ishai. I've never been killed by Dargo, but I have seen people get killed by Dargo. And I have killed people with commander damage with Paco. That is amazing. So these commanders are actually CDH viable, but they also have that plan B Voltron strategy. And sometimes you actually get there. And having Trample really helps out. I think this could grow exponentially scary fast. It's gonna get into play like turn two really consistently, being a green deck. You're gonna have a turn one mana dork, a bird of paradise, land ref, whatever. It's gonna grow on your turn, maybe even turn two. It's gonna definitely grow a bunch on turn three. And you're probably always gonna attack with this. Always gonna threaten life a little bit here and there. I mean, everyone is playing odd nows, so this is definitely capable of smashing and interacting with some Odnos players. Personally, I really like the land archetype. I would wish that it had red in it so I could play Valakut. This and Valakut would have been really fun. But in any case, I think it's gonna have some viability. And I think playtesting will really showcase its true potential because it is a little bit unique and you really need to get a feeling of it just to see how it's going to flow. That's it for today. Take care, guys. Oh, by the way, Golos is banned. Gonna have a video about that coming up very soon. Take care. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, 
purchasing cards from the TCG player's website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.